Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I have a card video for you today, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I want to create a slimline card and I want to create a pile of donuts. This is a jelly bean soup donut stamp set. It's been in my stash a while. And I kind of want to create this one layer. I, I started out with a different plan and I decided I wanted to go one layer on this. So in order to do a one layer card, you have to do some creative stamping and masking. So there are three donuts in this stamp set. One that has sprinkles and a bite taken out of it. One that has um, a solid frosting and one that has a not solid frosting ring. And I ended up using only two of them um, because I, I didn't want that solid frosting. I'm using black ink and I thought black frosting was weird. So yeah, we're gonna go with that. So when you are doing a one layer card, you need to stamp the front image first and then mask it off. So in this first layer of donuts, I want the one with the bite out of it to be on top, to be the front of the focal image. So I need to stamp that first and then mask it off. I will be using this VersaFine VersaClair ink in Nocturne Black because I am coloring with my colored pencils today. Um, and it's a good ink for, well, it's a good ink for everything. <laughs> um, so now I have my, my stamp, um, donut stamp. I need to create a mask for it. I have a couple of masks already made, but I do not have one for this donut with the bite out of it. So I am going to ink that, or not re-ink it, stamp it onto a piece of Gina K Masking Magic. Um, I have kind of mixed feelings about this paper. It goes down well, it leaves no residue, but sometimes the ink stays slick on the surface for a while. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> I am now going to put the other stamps in place. And this is when I realized that one of those stamps has a solid image frosting and I ended up not using that. And these two donuts are going to be slightly behind the donut with the bite taken out of it. And every time I put my stamps down and then pull it back up, I am re-putting or repositioning rather that piece of paper back into the top left corner of my Misty so that it stays lined up how I want it. So now that I have this donut all stamped and my Misty is sliding all over my desk, I could not figure out what the heck was going on. Turns out I had a piece of paper or something stuck underneath this. So it was just <laughs> all over the place, but yeah, so I have um, created or cut the center out of that mask. So these masks that I've used previously did not have the center hole cut out. And I did want that because I am going to add donuts behind them still. So it will look kind of like a donut display. <laughs> um, I have sped this up quite a bit and I did cut out a lot of the coloring. I think the raw footage for this video was somewhere near the two hour line. Um, I did, I did take that out quite a bit. <laughs> Don't want you to get nervous. It's only about a 20 minute video. <laughs> so now that I have my three bottom donuts masked, I can stamp a fourth. And as I'm stamping, I'm just kind of creating more masks or shifting around the masks that I have. Um, either or. I, I tend to keep the masks that I create as long as they are sticky. I just put them on the back of the stamp packaging and they go right back in my, my pouch or my little stamp pocket. It is a bit of a trick to try and get the backing off these masks sometimes. That one did take me a minute. I did have to pull out my pokey tool, but all in all, it went okay. <laughs> Every time you move that stamp around, you do need to clean that off. So I have my Lawn Fawn stamp chamois right there really close so that I can clean it off well. Now I decided instead of going pyramid, cause that was just a little bit too precious, I guess in my mind, <laughs> I am going to go then farther down the page. And I'm just kind of moving around the masks at this point. Um, I, overall it turned out well. I don't think that the donut pile in my head resembled the donut pile on my card, but I think that the image in my head was not the 
didn't match the size of my donuts and my card front. Let's put it that way. But I still have a pile of donuts that make for a really fantastic card. And one of the best parts about masking is removing that mask. So you can see my little donut pile there. And what I want to do is add a layer of ink blending through this kind of um, polka dot or bubble stencil. So in order to do that, I have to put the masks back on. And yes, you would have thought I knew that before time, ahead of time, before I took them all off. And I did know that, and yet I still peeled all my masks off. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, the raw footage for this video was about two hours, probably because I kept doing weird things. <laughs> okay, so I pulled out a, a grid pad, and I'm using a light blue ink and a blending brush. And you can see that my stencil is not quite as long as my card front. That is not a huge deal. This pattern is not so precise and exact that how I line it up is going to matter in the end. Um, it's just going to look like a continuation of random sized um, bubbles or circles. Um, I originally wanted to do big polka dots, but the big polka dot stencil I had, the polka dots were almost as big as the donuts and that didn't, um, it didn't look right in my brain. So I just pulled out this one and it looks perfect. And here is the true joy of masking. I pull all those masks off and you can see that behind them, there is no ink blending and I love it. So now it is time to get to the coloring. I have decided I want to use one of these two stamp sets. I think I'll go with everything is better with sprinkles. And then I can use this for either a birthday or a get well, or, you know, a, a high, um, support card. Now I do put a piece of scrap paper underneath my hand, just in case that black ink smears just a bit as I'm laying my hand all over it. And I have sped this up. I have chosen, um, okay, here's my color pencils. Let me pull them out of my little thing on my desk. For the donuts, I am using um, dark brown, light umber, and goldenrod. And I was really surprised. I found this color combination actually on Carissa Wiley's blog from a card she made with donuts. Oh my goodness. I think it was like 2006 or 2016 maybe. It was a bit ago. <laughs> I just kind of did a Google search for um, Prismacolor donut color combinations and it popped up to her super cute card. And I will try to remember to link that down below in the description box so you can see her card. Anyway, I was I was a little bit questionable about the, the dark brown and the light umber with the goldenrod, I thought for a donut, but it turns out really awesome. I do use two layers. I go in first and I start with my dark and I lay all the shadows down. Then I go to the medium and kind of drag those shadows out. And then I fill in the majority of the image with the main color, in this case, the lightest color. And then I go back over it. And one thing that is really cool about this VersaClaire ink is that it doesn't seem to be um, the, the wax from the color pencil. So color pencils, the pigment is delivered in wax form, right? And a lot of times when I use like um, a memento or even a VersaFine black, sometimes that coloring kind of goes over that black line and it doesn't seem to have done that with this VersaFine VersaClaire ink. So here, all of my donuts are colored in um, and I'm going to go through, I have two colors for the frosting. I'm going to do a strawberry frosting with pinks and a chocolate frosting with browns. And I pulled out two colors, but then I went back and got a third. So for the pinks, I used magenta, um, hot pink, and, oh, here's my light pink. And I can't see the color name on these pencils. Um, deco pink. <laughs> It's really hard to see the color names on these pencils. And I am doing the same thing. I am starting using the magenta. And this magenta is a stubby, stubby pencil. But I use it a lot. It's one of the pinks I use the most often. So I will use it until I can no longer hold it. And then I'll probably get a colored pencil holder and still use it until it's gone. It's just a great 
color for shadows. It's a good pink. So I'm adding the shadow down around the outside edge of the frosting and also around the hole. So it makes that the frosting look like it went down into the hole of the donut. It adds some dimension. I am then taking the hot pink and filling in, pulling those shadows out and not quite filling it in. Um, the hot pink is the main color for the strawberry frosting. And then this deco pink becomes the highlight color. And so it gets just a little bit around the top of what the frosting would be. And then I go back and do it all over again. I put in the shadows. I drag the shadows out a bit and then add the highlight. And you can see that with that second application, the shadows really intensify it. It really starts to add the dimension that um, colored pencils are so good for. So good for. Um, I am, again, only going to color one pencil or one donut for you and then skip ahead to the chocolate. And this is on like, um, maybe even be four times speed. I, I did speed it up quite substantially because colored pencils for me personally are a slower color medium. So now that I have my strawberry frosting all colored, I'm going to go ahead and go in with um, chocolate and light umber and ginger root for the chocolate frosting. And again, with that chocolate color, because it is the darker of the three, I'm just going to go around the edges and create where my shadows are. And my shadows are heavier in the dips than they are on the rises because the chocolate would have kind of dripped down that side just a little bit. And then the around the center hole as well, kind of creating the illusion there that the chocolate frosting has gone down into the center hole of the donut. Um, I am trying to remember to keep my fingers back away from the edge of the, the tip of the pencil. And sometimes I remember and correct myself <laughs> and it makes the coloring go a lot smoother. This is the light umber color. I am pulling the shadow out. Um, and, and light umber again will be the, the main color with the ginger root being the highlight. So I not only need to pull the shadow out, I need to um, fill in the majority of the frosting color here. And it's a little bit harder to blend. There is a, a, a big color difference between light umber and chocolate. So it did take a little bit more pencil work to blend and eliminate those pencil lines, which is another reason that using two coats is always a good plan. Minimally two coats. If you have to go back, oh, um, three or four even, because the more pressure you put down with a color pencil, the flatter you're going to flatten the, the tooth of that paper, and then it won't accept any more color. So you really want to add the color and the depth of the color in layers with colored pencils. It's such a fascinating medium, I think, to work with. You know, um, it's dramatic. Color pencils can have really dramatic um, shadows and highlights, but they do take more time to create with pencils and they take a lighter touch. The more heavy your pressure is, the more likely you are to have pencil strokes, which is interesting. I mean, common sense, but it's still interesting. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and go back over this and pull those shadows out. Um, I decided while I was coloring these pencils that even though I loved how the highlight looked, I was going to add glossy accents to my card. That is the last thing I do when I make a card because glossy accents does take quite a long time to dry. However, I feel like maybe I should have put the glossy accents on this panel and let it dry and then assembled the card because I put a substantial amount of glossy accents on and it did kind of warp the card a little bit. I had to put it under something flat to get it to lay back down. So now I'm going back in for a third layer with this light umber. I just was not liking how those pencil strokes were blending out. And eventually I got it all done. I have created a card base here. This is a piece of light blue paper. It is eight and a half inches by seven inches. And with the seven inch side on top, I will score it at three and a half. 
And this card will fit into a regular business envelope, a regular number 10 envelope. And it's a perfect little layer there. There is a little bit of, you can see on the back, I started with the blending first and then decided I wanted to go one layer. So I just used the other side of the paper. Paper has two sides. <laughs> use all the sides of all the paper. You can see right there kind of toward the end where my stenciling isn't quite perfect, but it doesn't look completely out of, out of place. I am going to go ahead and stamp that sentiment. The one that says everything is better with sprinkles on a piece of scrap white cardstock with that VersaClair versifying, um, the VersaClair ink. What is, I don't know what the color is now all of a sudden. It's the black one. <laughs> Okay, I am going to trim that down with my paper trimmer and I am being very, very careful because I still have not gotten replacement blades for my trimmer and I don't want it to make um, yucky edges. And once I have that trimmed out, I'm going to tape it to a piece of that light blue cardstock and create a border. I think that will just kind of add um, emphasis and um, interest to my little sentiment square. I'm just trimming that down with a super narrow border. And that is one thing I really like about this Fiskars trimmer. I can get narrow, narrow borders because I can see exactly where that paper is going to cut. I'm just going to hold that down for a minute. And now we are going to add the glossy accents. I did go ahead and put the liner on the inside of my card before I put the glossy accents on. I just um, edited that part out because the video was getting kind of long. My glossy accents was clogged. I did have to take some time and unclog it and get it free flowing again. It had fallen down in my drawer and well, you know, it happens. So I am going to add glossy accents to all of the frosting parts of the donuts. If I had really been on my game, I would have put Wink of Stella down first and then it would have been like glitter frosting. But I thought if I do just glossy accents, then maybe this card could go to somebody who's less inclined to like glitter like a man or a boy. <laughs> and I am going slow. That was real time. You can see how slow I went to make sure that I got no air bubbles and that I covered all of the frosting space. And here it is the next day, nice and dry. Um, you can see it's kind of warped the paper just a little bit there on the edge. So I did put it under something flat. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and have a really great day. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and watching my video. I have linked a couple other videos here for you to watch as well as a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And if you know somebody who would like it, please feel free to share. Have a great day.